And we are here at the NCAA Division III football tournament first round. This is the Alma College site for the contest between Alma College and DePaul University. We are here with DePaul University head coach Brett Dietz. Brett, congratulations on a fantastic season and uh, qualifying for the NCAA tournament. Uh, we're going to come to you for an opening statement first. Thanks. Yeah, uh, we are um, excited to have this opportunity to come up here um, and play a really good football team. Um, we've had a great year so far. Um, Obviously accomplished a lot of our goals, but we, we still have one big goal left, and, and that's to keep advancing into the NCAA tournament. And uh, we take that one week at a time. So we're up here this week to take care of business and, and to win this week and, and to keep moving on. So um, we're in one week goals now, and, and we got a goal for this week, and we're trying to accomplish that tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. And you guys are coming off of a, a rather rather big game, um, which I would avoid, but I really can't. Double overtime win in the yeah. Monon Bell game. Um, Electric atmosphere, it's a really big game and a really great win for the program. Um, how do you sort of come off of a big game like that, and how do you, with, with the guys, kind of keep the energy up, keep the momentum up, um, coming into what you know is going to have to be another kind of high-caliber contest? Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously it's hard for us or Wabash coming off that emotional win with 10,000 people there, double overtime. Um, but our, our team is, is kind of built for that. That's, we we kind of thrive on adversity. Um, we kind of thrive on uh, having our backs against the wall. Um, DePaul never quits is a real motto that we use and, and we, we breathe and, and we live every day. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, obviously it was an emotional win, but we were accomplishing goals and, and uh, that's, that's something that we plan for, right? Um, in fact, when you play at DePaul, um, you know this is going to be the issue, right? You know you're going to have to play the one on Bell game and turn around and play an NCAA tournament game the next the next year and so that's stuff that we're learning we've learned over the past couple of years and it just is what it is so um, we're here we're ready for the challenge we're ready to go yeah definitely and, and speaking of accomplishments the first 10 win season in program history again and that's a, a congratulations to your program and to you and your staff as well um, what, what does that mean to kind of be in the business now of, of history making in your program just your fourth season in um, three NCAA tournament trips uh, I believe fourth on the all-time wins list. I might be wrong on that, but I was looking at the game notes uh, <laughs> earlier. Um, you're kind of doing all sorts of history making at the moment. What does that kind of feel like for you and, and for this program? Well, it's what we set out to do, right? We, we took over four years ago. You know, I've, I've been at DePaul for 10 years prior, um, had a chance to sit back and, and be with a bunch of awesome mentors. And, and we've assembled a great staff here. We've been able to recruit in some really good um, not just athletes, but DePaul students, DePaul student athletes that fit in both from an academic standpoint, from a cultural standpoint, and also from an uh, athletic standpoint. And so we're in a really good place now. Um, we got great players out there. Um, and the guys that aren't here, we have other great players that kind of step into that role too. So, um, but, but this is what we set out to do, right? Our, our teams have done a great job accomplishing goals and, and we haven't just set records this year. We've been setting records really every year um, since the pandemic. So. Um, this is kind of what we expect, and, and, uh, but this is another hurdle, this is another challenge that uh, we need to get over. Um, just like we did in 2021, we won the first round and got to the second round, and, and uh, last year's team was very upset that we didn't uh, you know, match that or surpass that. And so um, our goals this year were, were to get back to that and to surpass that as well. So um, we, are, we are kind of on pace here, so uh, everybody else may be shocked that we're 10-0, but, but in our building, in our team room, like this is what we expected, this is what we planned for, these were our goals that we set. And so when you should never be shocked to accomplish your goals. And so we've accomplished goals so far and we got another another big benchmark tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Um, and this is, as you mentioned, you know, your third straight appearance now in the tournament. Um, is it becoming, I think, obviously with every game, maybe you coach in the postseason, it becomes a little bit more of a comfortable environment for you. Um, do you kind of sense the feeling that within your players every year that those guys kind of get that experience of, of coming and playing in a big postseason game? Um, they kind of become a little more battle-tested of that postseason environment, a little more ready and, and eager to get into it? Absolutely. We're not just happy to be here. We're here to win. And uh, I felt like in the past we've been happy to be there in certain situations. Um, and... I think this year it's, it's been pretty evident, even you know, without verbally talking about it, just, just the mood in the room when they announced the pairings in the NCAA, it wasn't like, man, we're happy to be here. It's like, no, this is, this is what we do. And uh, you know, interesting thing with the pandemic, you know, made it really interesting, but 
You know, nobody on our roster has never won the conference. Nobody on our roster has never not gone to the playoffs. So, like, to our guys, even though it's a little bit different for DePaul and the history of things, you know, to the guys in the room, this is what we do. Yeah, and then uh, one question I did get from uh, from Pat Coleman at yeah. D3Football.com. Um, he did want to know, who who are you looking to uh, to really step up and make the difference tomorrow? Um, maybe changes to the depth chart as you come into the postseason. You can only travel 68. You can only dress 58. Um, who are you looking to maybe individually, if you're comfortable with that, uh, to kind of step up and really take take it to this Alma team? Yeah, I think it's, it's Nate McCato, our quarterback. Um, he's had a great year. Um, he's been very comfortable in the pocket. I know... Almost going to challenge them tomorrow. I know um, it's a very opportunistic defense that we're facing tomorrow. I believe they have 22 interceptions on the year. Um, and so we got to really take care of the football tomorrow. And so it's going to start and end with him for sure. Yeah, definitely. And, and you maybe kind of lent into that. Um, the next question a little bit there. Um, but the last one I have for you is, uh, you know, you are facing a 10-0 Alma squad. Um, what is it going to take from from your troops to uh, to get you back sitting at this table as the advancing team tomorrow? Yeah, obviously we got to frustrate them um, from our defensive side of the ball, their offense. I think their offense is very efficient. Um, you know, I think we've played similar opponents. We've played them differently. Uh, but we've also played in-conference opponents differently from other conference opponents too, right? So you can't just say, hey, because this team beat here and we took whipped overtime and Alma, you know, beat them by three touchdowns, like therefore, you know, you can't really play that game. you got to play football. Because if that was the case, then Wabash should have smoked us last year or last week because they smoked Whitberg and we had to take Whitberg overtime. So you can never do that comparing game, but but just being familiar with, with Alma, um, obviously Carter St. John's an Indianapolis kid, so we're aware of him. We recruited him, you know, watched him play basketball. Like we know what kind of athlete he is, and I've seen the athletes that Alma has. Like we're going to have our work cut out for us on the defensive side of the ball, but we have a pretty veteran group on our defense, just like Alma has a bunch of seniors on their group. So. It should be a, a great matchup of, of two really good teams. Um, and so I, I think it's a, it's a great matchup on both sides. Yeah, I think it's one that a lot of us are, uh, are looking forward to seeing uh, what's going to be out there on the field tomorrow. The product's going to be great. Um, do you have anything to say as sort of a closing statement before we uh, let you get ready to get prepped? You know, I think we've, we've always kind of in the back of our minds know that we were destined to play each other. At least we knew we were always destined to play Alma. Part of it's the Carter St. John connection, but part of it, I think DePaul and Alma have had similar rises since the pandemic um, of what they were pre-pandemic versus what they were post-pandemic has been pretty different. Um, and I think between you know, DePaul, Alma, Aurora have had very similar um, you know, kind of rises um, and, and done very well um, on a conference and, and really on a national scale. So I think we we're always destined to meet eventually and it, and it happens to be tomorrow. So we're excited for that opportunity. And everyone will be excited. 12 o'clock Eastern on Balky Field. You can catch that live stream right here on the Alma Scott's YouTube channel. Coach, thanks so much, and we'll, uh, good luck uh, heading into tomorrow's contest. Thank you.